video, I'll show you three ways you can include windows in a portrait shoot. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can include windows in your portraits to create three entirely different looks. And when it comes to gear, I'm going to keep this super simple and straightforward. I'm going to use my camera and natural light. Let's get going. So to help me out today, I've been joined by Jade. Jade is going to be the model for this, and as you can see, she's dressed in a style that kind of complements the Rofant house we're in here as one of its many interesting periods of history. And we're going to begin by doing a nice, simple silhouette. It's perhaps the most straightforward of the shots to do, because all you need is a bright light source, like the outside world, and then your model to be in somewhere darker, like the inside of this room. Now, if you've got a brightly lit room, then you might want to turn the lights out. And also, if your room is really white, then that can cause this to be a little bit more tricky. But we've got quite a dark room to work with here, so this should work really well. Now, if I just let the camera do its own thing at this point and just say, OK, take a picture at the standard exposure, whatever you think is right camera, it's going to come out with a shot that's, well, I've got some detail outside, I've got some detail inside. It's not really giving me one thing or the other. That's what auto exposure does. In this case, I need to take control of the exposure. And I'm going to do that by switching to manual mode. And then I'm going to use the shutter speed to adjust the exposure. I'm going to deliberately underexpose Jade. And I can see it actually on the back of my camera, or I could use the camera's built-in spot meter, whichever way you prefer. And I'm going to underexpose by maybe a stop and a third, up to two stops, depending on taste and the brightness of your background. And that's going to give me a really dark exposure on Jade, but still detail in the outside world. When it comes to focusing, I'm using a shallower depth of field. And it's important that you focus on your subject, not on the background. And lastly, I think these pictures work great as black and white images. So I could do that in post-processing, or I could do it right here in camera. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's take a few pictures. As you're doing your silhouettes, if you notice that it's not quite as silhouette as you would like, one thing you can do is actually move your subject away from the window. The further they are away, the less light from the window will reach them and the more of a silhouette they will become. So for this setup, we're going to do something completely different. We've changed to a different room. We have found the coldest room here at Rofan's house. It's freezing. Last time we exposed for the highlights. This time I'm going to expose for the shadows. Now what that will do to the windows is it'll make the windows go really bright white. Now this is a perfect technique if the world outside your windows is less than glamorous. Now to achieve it, I need to do some work on the camera. So let's come around the back here. If I let the camera just do its own thing in aperture priority mode or something similar, evaluative metering means I get a picture that is okay. I can see detail in Jade's face, but I can also see detail in the windows. And remember, that's what I want to get rid of. Now I could use exposure compensation, but I'm gonna to switch to manual mode instead and take full control of my settings. I'm not gonna adjust my aperture. I'm gonna adjust my shutter speed and ISO. So if I take my shutter speed to a slower setting, my picture gets brighter. Now to work out whether it's right or not, I can either judge on the screen or I can use spot metering, spot meter off of Jade's face, and that will allow me to get a great exposure. So that's the basic technique. Let's take a few pictures like this. This works really well if your model keeps their back to the windows and those windows aren't in direct sunlight. And finally, we come to balancing the light. And that's where I'm trying to get the same amount of light on Jade's face and on the windows so I can see detail in both. 
Now to do this, again, I'm gonna try and avoid harsh direct sunlight, and I'm gonna try and use one extra thing. It's basically this, which is a big silver reflector. You could use a flash if that's your preference, but a silver reflector is a great tool. Now what this is gonna do is act like a mirror. It's gonna bounce light back onto Jade. It needs to go very close to make this happen. So the closer I get it, the more even the illumination will be. So here's what it looks like exposed for the windows, but without the reflector. And then when I add the reflector in, you can see how much of a difference that makes. When it comes to the shooting mode, I could happily use Aperture Priority right now because it's a nice even exposure. You can use manual if you prefer, but one thing I'd highly recommend is you shoot in RAW. Okay, let's take a few pictures like this. Here we go, Jet. If you're lucky enough to have a bit more space, you can make more dramatic use of this reflector by moving it around. For us, we're a little bit limited on space, but fortunately, I've got Jade doing amazing work, so I'll keep shooting. So there you go, having windows in your portrait photography can make a big difference to your photos, but even bigger is being able to control what you see or don't see through them. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a comment below, click on the bell icon, and of course, click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching.